God, guys. It has been one hell of a week. Um, We got court last week. Amber and I have been reading it. Not well. I have been reading it nonstop. I have. Um, I am. I am with child. Yeah. I'm, my my child has kind of prevented me from being able to read it as fast as I would like to. Amber finished it, of course, way faster than I did. But we are here. Yep. We are recording this episode, guys. If you haven't read Court all the way through, like beginning to end, turn back now. Wait until our normal scheduled episodes. This is a bonus episode of the podcast where we're going to only be talking about court. And yes, we are talking about all the spoilers. This is our full like review of the whole book, not doing a chapter by chapter thing until we actually get to that point in the storyline, because obviously we're still reading Crush for our normal episodes of the podcast. Um, so you can always come back to this episode later. You can skip it all together. But we know that some of you have read all of Court and you need someone to chat about all of the craziness, all of the battles, all of the secrets that we had revealed to us, all of the deaths that happened during this book. So this is your last chance, guys. Bounce out. We we will not hold it against you if you leave. We encourage you to do so. We do not want to spoil this story for you. Last chance. We bid you adieu. Okay. Amber, <laughs> when did you finish the book? I finished within, I think I read it within 13 hours or something ridiculous. How? How? <laughs> I am a very fast reader and I'm going to be honest, it was very difficult for the first couple of hours and that was because I was very annoyed at my bookshop. Oh yeah, you were you were yeah. you were upset. You were yeah. So when I say that it took me that long, probably would have shaved off a few hours had I not been walking to and from my house for an hour, going to the bookstore on day <laughs> of release to find out that it had not been released in the UK yet, and they weren't even off of a pallet yet. Um, they are still. They're still not in the UK. We well, still don't have hard copies. I'm going to be going, and because I have the Vampire Court Edition, which you can only get at Target, I'm going to be going to Barnes & Noble and getting the Dragon Court Edition. That way I can send it to Amber, but then I can read the Dragon Court chapters before I send it to her. I can send her my Vampire Court chapters because they don't, they're not going to get any of the exclusive editions in the UK. And then, nope. and then you know, we'll, we'll navigate from there. But um, we have both finished... The book. This is really the last chance, guys, for you guys to bounce out. We're not kidding. You're going to have and things ruined if for you. you. Want some, if you if you want some time, we've also written down because a lot of people are really confused by the different editions. So there are five different versions that you can get. One of which is the original, and it doesn't have any specific bonus chapters in, which is available via Amazon. Mm -hmm. I have that Kindle one too. version, and also like most bookstores overseas mm -hmm. um but if you're in america and you have access to barnes and noble you get the dragon edition and it's you can tell by the front cover whether it is or not uh it will say tipping the scales uh, book people and independent bookshops have the gargoyle edition and it says blood from stone uh target is the vampire and it says just bite me and Books A Million is the witch one, and that's every which way. And I think that is the version that is actually owned by the least amount of people. Yeah, I, I can get that one. I can get my hands on it if for any reason you would prefer to have that one. I actually might be going to the green today. So if you would like Ooh. that one, maybe I could go, I could get that one instead. I want a surprise. Okay, well, I'll see what I can do. You're either going to get <laughs> witches or, or dragon. So it'll it'll be okay. one of the two. But um, all right, guys. Let's go ahead and jump into this, hoping that um, everybody has bounced out. We had we had so many things. We had so many things that, that <laughs> happened. I, I don't even know where to start. Um, I mean, first of all, I was I was brokenhearted like from the beginning with Yeah, just... it really it really brought you back to what had happened right at the end of Covet. Yeah. I was I was It was like immediate immediate stress too like you don't normally jump into a book and you're just like oh god we're here like you know you're you're <laughs> so turmoil. upset yeah and then it starts with that instant stress because luca is dead he's obviously yeah. he died at the end of covet and they need to decide like what okay we have to decide are we gonna call his parents who could potentially be on cyrus's side 
or are we going to, you know, just let him kind of turn to ash? Because apparently that's that's a thing. They have to go to these <laughs> family crypts that we haven't. Which is kind of a terrifying idea. Yeah, or else or else he turns to ash. And obviously, you know, Jackson has that loyalty to him. So in in Flint, you know, he's he loved Luca. So it's it's mm-hmm. this whole conundrum. And I mean, Hudson is definitely being logical when he's like, nah, this is not a good idea but it's good that they do because it turns out that maurice is one of the betrayals she a bitch i know she's like i did not suspect her in the slightest no i didn't either um and when i mean it it definitely wasn't like i wasn't like oh my god like i was like i I could see that but i didn't suspect also the betrayal the betrayal didn't last very long because she immediately gets killed yeah her throat gets ripped (laughs) out so it's like uh, oh (laughs) yeah um so yeah but it, it does make sense it's like why would she be the only one left and nobody suspect her i didn't imagine that she was going to be a bigger character other than just kind of like madame pomfrey you never expect Madame Pomfrey to be more than just Madame Pomfrey. <laughs> well, you, you've got to have those characters because you've got the characters that you love, you have the characters that you like, and then you have the characters where you're like, meh, I know who they are, but I have a good picture of them yep. in my head, but they're not they're not all that important. Yeah, so that was the first betrayal. Yeah. Um, and um, between Maurice and... Lucas' parents, they actually find out that Cyrus not only has just abducted the children from the school, but she also tells them that he is, like, draining their powers and absorbing them himself. All right, so can I just say that there are... Okay, so this book, I got, like, his dark materials out of it. Like, draining draining the children of their demons. I got, like, I got, like, that vibe. And then I got, like, um... I got like some Horcrux vibes with Hudson's soul being, being ripped apart and God, what, what else? There was another like big one that I got. I got, I I know that there was something very court of thorns and roses, um, feeling not, not the mating bond. Um, I can't remember (laughs) there was something, there wasn't, there was something more specific that, that tied back to that. There was like, there were like little elements that took like all of your favorite, like, fantasy stories and kind of like molded them together and that just makes me more Mm -hmm. mad when i see people who are like this is the twilight knockoff i'm like what part of this what part (laughs) of any oh yeah there's vampires and werewolves in it yeah that makes it twilight like i get really annoyed when people compare it to twilight because it's nothing like twilight if anything it's like i said it's more court of thorns and roses harry potter and i don't even know what else well i i feel like with the court of thorns and roses King Hyburn wasn't as evil as Cyrus. No. Cyrus was more of a manipulator to the point where he knew that at every every stage he was just getting more and more powerful. Um and that even the things that he was making them do made him more powerful. There was going to be a tipping point that there if we do not defeat him now, we never will. And it's because he's going to take so much that there's there's going to be no putting the toothpaste back in the tube. It's done. We can't kill him now because it's too too difficult. Yeah. And that was the entire premise of the book was that time was running out and they had to play very strategically as to what they were willing to sacrifice and surrender and give up. Um, and also like sleight of hand as to what they were actually doing the entire time, whether they were doing things under the under the veil of doing things for for Cyrus. Um, was it the the deals that Grace was making? Yes, the felt... tattoos. Yes. yes. So every deal that she makes throughout the, the, the book, it's like a, it doesn't, a, a deal comes with a cost and the cost is marked on your skin, uh, like the tattoos, like Feyre has. Yes. Um, but I really enjoyed the fact that the tattoos actually had something to do with the character that she made the deal with yeah. whereas on a court of thorns it was very random or moony literally they were all just moons or creepy eyes there wasn't really anything specific about that character that yeah it's almost like you, in ink. you can't forget it when it like literally is like a like it 
symbolizes what it is that you owe that yeah um, and we and we find out later what what exactly happens if you go back on your deal yeah um which is quite horrifying um um I have so many. I have so many things. <laughs> so um, the, one of the things was that so Grace spends the night with Hudson and then wakes up in the morning in Catmere and runs up to Macy's room to pack her bag, which is what the entangled teen like wall bag was. Yeah, that yeah. You were she, making and she puts a lot of the items that we got in those bags. I got hair ties. I got a toiletry bag. I got pop a t-shirt. Tarts. Yeah, I got pop tarts. I thought that that was a really really cool thing and i'm like man, it's a it, cute little trope no they did, she didn't even pack the rope for hudson oh, <laughs> oh but i definitely got the vibes when she was packing that bag that it wasn't a bag to go to war or i'm leaving in an hour it was definitely like a i wonder whether hudson's cleared out a drawer for me vibe i got like an overnight bag vibe like oh no i got a, like a, i'm moving in with him because the way that she did it like sneaking around macy it was almost like she tried to she didn't speak to Macy about it and was like, let's pack together. Like, is there anything that we can kind of double up on knowing that both girls are going? Like, you both don't want to pack your straighteners. Yeah. I feel- but she did it very, very quietly and as if she wasn't going to tell Macy that she planned to move into his room. That was one of the moments that made me kind of sad because I was thinking about it. I'm like, this is probably the last, especially when Grace like sees her own bed and she like lays down and I'm like, this is the last moment that we're going to get this. I, I can yeah. just feel it. Like, this is the last It was moment. a very good goodbye to Katmir. Yeah, like I felt that like it hurt like deep down because I was like this. I know that I can sense that this is the last time that they are going to be le- sleeping in this room together and it it yep. made me sad um and it was and then we also and we also got the same moment at the chessboard it was a a drawing back to the first scenes of crave yeah when she met jackson at the chessboard um but instead of jackson she meets the unkillable beast and they have a moment they connect and zap and i was like oh dear god for the love of god do not have another bond with him what is going on because the way that she described it was like a zap and then she felt like they were intrinsically connected for the rest of time and i was like oh god um but no it turns out that he or her somehow ended up in the gargoyle court and he was her grandfather and his name is alistair so that's the first new character that we get introduced to in court at least Um, it's a cool name I was yeah. like, there were a lot of cool names in this book. I was like, okay, Alistair, I can get that. That's a that's a cool one. Yeah. Uh, um, and we, we find out that it's an island as well. So I, I enjoyed the um, the name Alistair being used because it's a very sort of traditional British Irish name. Um, you don't see that here. <laughs> no. Um, but Alistair as a name always makes me think of somebody evil. Oh, so yeah. I immediately had suspicions. <laughs> yeah. Um, And uh, we find out that um, his mate, the person that he wants to give the crown to, um, is Grace's grandmother. And he says that she's more likely to bite you than she is to do anything nefarious with stone. Did you immediately make the connection like I did? Yes. Did you immediately go, oh, it's the blood letter? Yes, I immediately made the connection. And what's funny is one of the suspicions that I've had for a long time was that the crone and the blood letter were the were the sisters. Mm-hmm. But it was just, it, it felt... Was, they were too connected. It felt so outlandish in my head that I'm like, I feel this is one of those things that I'm going to say it and everybody's going to tell me I'm stupid, so I'm not going <laughs> to share it. And then I regretted it. The second that I read it, I was like, damn it, I should have said it. Everybody would be yeah. like, yeah, Starla was right, but no. No, oh, you guys ripped that away from me. But I knew it. I knew it. I swear I did. Yeah, that was. I was so in. I was so annoyed at Grace's like stupidity at not connecting the dots. Yeah, like yeah. who else would that be? Yeah, maybe she was in denial and was like thinking that like her grandmother was probably either dead or has she hadn't met her yet and didn't want the blood letter to be anything because she she thought she was horrible. She hated the blood letter. Yeah. I mean, it probably I mean, still does a little bit. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, it doesn't really excuse everything. Like, I, we got, like, a reason for it, but she also was super cryptic and wasn't just honest from the beginning, which would have solved a whole lot of problems, but would have made for a very boring book. Um, <laughs> so what did you think about Chapstick Stain? Oh, God, I hate him. He is absolute knob. Um, so that is that what you called him? Chapstick Stain? 
No, I, I just, caught him. I was just <laughs> was reading. Like, I, was... <laughs> I was reading your name, so I figured I needed to come up with one. Yeah, chapstick stain is funny. That's funny. I'm funnier than mine. Um, I said that she finds the the gargoyle army have been frozen in time for a thousand years, and she meets the commander of their army called Chastain, or as I like to call him, Chastise or Disdain, because he is a miserable douche. <laughs> he reminds me of he has, um. K- what? Well, how do you pronounce in Throne of Glass? How did you pronounce his name? The, the Kale. Kale. K- kale, 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 kale. I, I, I think it like ke- like kale, like the kind of, the green stuff you eat, kale. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's what he. I, you know what? I honestly, I just reused the image that I had of that character and placed it. <laughs> like I'm like, okay, they're the, they they act the same. They're the same person. <laughs> they look. They oh, look the same. He had such he had such a superiority complex about him that he was like. He already dismissed her the moment that she walked up and said that she wasn't that kind of queen. Um, like, he'd already come to judge her before he'd even really spoken to her. How many queens fight? Like, you know, I mean, there's a lot. I yeah, read, I know, right? I read a lot of books where queens fight, but in most cases, like, queens don't freaking fight. They like, delegate. Yeah, they stand back they're on the, the most sidelines. important. Well, they're one of the most important pieces on the chessboard. Come on. Yeah, but so, yeah. that's why you protect them. <laughs> that's why you use you use the lessers in order to protect the queen so that everything doesn't completely fall apart. You don't put her right at the front. I mean, there's also we we obviously have like these fantasy badass queens who stand on the front lines, but that's not reality. So to expect her to, you know, immediately know what the hell she's doing and not to mention she's like wearing a hoodie. Like they're not like what what fine clothing <laughs> like they're not you know it's she, yeah she's she, yeah there's there's no there's no like even even when they go back to the gargoyle court with macy and hudson and everyone and they get out of their phone they're not even just like what is this contraption <laughs> um, well they can't they, yell a witch like it's not <laughs> yeah there's like oh even though they've been trapped for a thousand years i think they're very aware that they've been trapped for a thousand years because obviously they would they wouldn't have they would have known that nothing else was existing on their plane of existence. It was just a very much a in the bubble yeah. time bubble. Um, and this is when Grace starts that seed of time being able to be frozen. Um, and I did get that feeling that i was like oh i really hope that time doesn't start getting used as like oh we go back in time and then we go forward in time and then we and then we change the course and i might like please don't let that be like the solution to this goddamn battle that i'm gonna spend 900 pages reading and it's gonna go and we go back in time and kill him yay yeah that's that i was i was really nervous that it was gonna be like breaking dawn part two the movie where oh yeah yeah yeah, that where you're yeah. just like, oh, none of this actually happened. Yeah, I'm, I hate that. I hate when they yep. kill a bunch of people and then it's like you wake up from a dream and everybody's but fine. No, they didn't. Yeah, I'm so glad. Yeah. Um, so we get magic ring, which what mm-hmm. happens doesn't to- really do- nothing. Nothing happens with it. Nothing happens with this ring. She just is. I think it's her coronation ring. Is that now she's officially the queen okay um she doesn't bring it up anything again. happens i would have oh, no. you know what if i were her when cyrus wanted the ring wanted the god stone i would have just been like here it is because like he's not gonna know the difference i would have been like here it, it is been, and I it could have been him. any stone it yeah. could have been any stone here you go i would have handed him definitely that. wouldn't have given i wouldn't have given him the gargoyle ring <laughs> you never know what he could have done yeah i would have, i would have just given him anything yeah. i would have handed him anything to to just try to buy some time because yeah he wouldn't freaking know he's he's never held it before he doesn't he has no idea um so yeah they they find out that like the gargoyles speak telepathically as well but grace is unable to do it and um we find out later is because none of them none of them accept her as their queen (laughs) there's the twilight wolf pack there we go there's 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 where the twilight is it's the the communication god um (laughs) Um, and th- and then we have the Marie scene where she she betrays them and Lucas' parents kill her and they give her the heads up that wolf packs are coming uh, to either take them back to Cyrus and um, it doesn't sound like it's just like one it's all the wolf packs that <laughs> all the wolves the- oh god 
Um, and this is when we meet an interesting character called Dawood. Is it Daw? I I did it like Dawood. Dawood. I said Dawood. Like wood. Like but Dawood. apparently, there's lots of issues with pronunciation. But Brittany Zimmerman within the Wolf Pack has said that it's supposed to be said Dawood. Dawood. I said Dawood. Like that. Like <laughs> Dawood. But so not not only does this person have a very interesting name that nobody knows how to pronounce, but also they are the first non-binary character that I have ever ever read. Yes, same. Like, I, I swear. Same. And um, I was, and I didn't, know, I didn't know that at first because it's never acknowledged. So every time Grace would oh, say Oh, it they, is. It is. But it's so subtle because I think they refer to Dawood as he and Dawood speaks up and says they actually. Oh, but I, th- I didn't catch I, that. Yeah. But I thought that they were referring to the wolves. Oh. Like, oh, they're on their way. Uh, it's on their, the wolf pack's on their way. And they go, they actually um that's how i took I it i thought they... yeah i thought that it was like the like <laughs> all the wolves are coming that yeah it, it i was it confused me at first but then once i got it i got it like it it's took like, me oh yeah let's get yeah so yeah that just went right over my head entirely because i thought that like it meant that all like they all the wolves are yeah coming. yeah yeah it's not it's not just one wolf pack it's they are coming and when they um, when we found out that the wolves were coming did you immediately know that the poof was coming too the the quote that we got from i didn't i did i didn't i thought that they were just going to escape before the wolves turned up i was also immediately suspicious of dawood oh um, me too no um and i think that it was just the way that they were saying where they were from and then how they introduced themselves they just popped up like hi little smarty pants like yeah yeah i but yeah that you you gotta have that character and we didn't have that character before that just kind of you know the the quiet super smart like doesn't take fights in, fights in physics <laughs> yeah exactly we needed we needed the the um almost the science nerd of the group that could speak logic into these situations but right when and the, the, and the non-binary the non-binary thing isn't a gimmick either just like how flint being gay isn't really thrown out like uh, i'm trying to be different i'm trying to be one of the new avant-garde authors who tries to be as relevant as possible it was right. just a nope it's a they and just, that's it yeah. um and i kind i kind of loved the subtlety of it a lot of people are getting confused because it is very much a grammar thing so when you're you're reading and then they is thrown out you're like wait who who said that um but it became very easy once because it's a 900 page book you you got used to it eventually and um i think that it's a very good thing for tracy to have done because it starts that discussion and means that it paves the way for more more gender neutral characters because she's already done it and yeah. therefore she can show what happens when you've done it your brain adapts you know it's it's as with any new introduction of of any foreign concept i, I saw a lot of i tried to not read any of the posts that people were posting up until i finished the book because i didn't know if there would be any spoilers within i'm definitely like a comment creeper where i'll go through and read all the comments <laughs> on a thread that has nothing to do with me um and I, I tried not to do that, but I did see the post where people were confused. And it, it's all about adaptation. And the more that you, you know, encounter... There's got to be the first person. There's got to be the first book. At some yeah. point, there's got to be that first trailblazer of a person who goes, do you know what? I'm going to try it. And I I, I commend her for being that one. I mean, I'm not saying that she's the first person to ever writ, write one, because I have no experience of reading any others they might be out there um but i i enjoyed it as just yeah. a little bit of a oh that's interesting and that's new exactly and you know in 10 years it's not hopefully not going to be the new thing it's going to be the normal thing yeah. it's going to be it's not going to be the the novelty thing um i'm looking at your notes and i love i didn't notice until now the www.whatabitch.com <laughs> yeah about maurice <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh that's yeah. funny yeah. anyway we we've, we've got we've got an hour and we've got to blast through these so let's go for some of my highlights so i love the lighthouse i now think that everybody needs a lighthouse in their life i would like a lighthouse um and hudson can pull me out of the bath that i've just destroyed 
at any time he We're, wants. That's going to be an ASMR. We're going to do the lighthouse ASMR and I want to yes. do the taffy shop ASMR. Yes. Those are going to be some good ones. Yeah. Wait, well, um, I'm really, I'm really excited by the lighthouse idea. And yeah. Um, Backtrack cute. just a minute. I think of all the things. I mean, there's one death we'll talk about towards the end that was super sad. Um, mm-hmm. But I think that Catmere falling was probably one of the things that made me yeah. the most sad. See, it didn't it didn't hit as much for me. Really, I, it made me sad. No. Um, the one thing that did um, that I did put, and I think that it's probably just based on my own life cycle and span and whatever, was Macy finding out that her mother was alive this whole time and that she was living in the vampire court, and yeah. that that feeling that she's like, oh, not only did she abandon me, but she's been able to leave this whole time or is she living with the enemy like what happened um and i really felt for her so it's yeah. just that not that, knowing you don't know if they're yeah. if they're a bad guy if they're trapped if they're being and tortured. finding out that her dad knew this entire time as well yeah which meant that not only did her mum abandon her but her dad had, had lied to her about this right her whole life and not knowing like why like why haven't you done something why haven't you done something to bring her back and obviously he couldn't have we know that but you know yeah. at, with the, with the knowledge that Macy had at the time i totally agree like yeah yeah um and this auntie also reveals what the crown can do were you surprised by what well, cuz i thought the crown was supposed to be like all powerful but it turns out that there was only one like one specific thing that it could do which is pretty cool and immediately i was like yep they're going to remove cyrus's powers this straight away i was like that's that's the end game that's how they do it yeah and you know i th- i felt like that was a better because then if it falls into the wrong hands um then i mean it's bad but it's not like the most powerful item in the world that can literally end the world type item it's not like a nuclear weapon like it's just going to strip them of their powers which you know is arguably really bad but they'll yeah and i was also like wondering like it because it had to be she i think it's when she speaks to the blood letter she finds out that the only way to relinquish the the crown is to pass it down yeah and it wasn't mentioned but Grace probably was then thinking, okay, so if I do have children with Hudson, I then have to submit them to this decision as well. Yeah. Um, kind of like putting that burden on her children as well. She's like, well, we haven't even begun our relationship properly yet. And we're already having to think about consequences to having children and having to pass down this burden. I'm not only the queen of a gargoyle army that's not going to follow me anywhere, but also... Now I have to think about this thing that I can only pass down as like an heirloom that an heirloom of doom. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, we had a lot of people who suspected that Grace was a demigod. Like from the beginning, mm-hmm. we've had people send us messages saying that they think that the green string was a demigod, you know, tie. But I didn't think that it was because of like a connection with the blood. Like that, that whole with thing. The, like the seed, the seed that she put in or, or whatever. Yeah. I don't really understand that. And I think that i'm okay not understanding it because it was it was all magical so yeah yeah that well it, um. <laughs> well her parents wanted to bring they they went to the blood letter in order to try to bring a gargoyle into yeah. the world to restore the balance that you know had already been ripped yeah. away from from the world um yeah so Th- then then a ca- we get a new character at that point as well <laughs> i I, I i closed I closed the book for a minute when he he appeared in scuba gear and I was just like, oh my, what? <laughs> what? No. Yep. I'm like, I was just so, I was, I was so confused and it just reminded me, you know, Rick and Morty, like the brain monsters that, that yeah. are like, they're all, they're like, oh, y'all messing with time and they get super upset. Yeah. They got like, yeah, that's what I was <laughs> thinking. And then. <laughs> I was thinking about the end. There was like a little end scene where they thought that Einstein was Rick, but he goes, "I feel messed with time." Like I, 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 <laughs> that's the whole the whole thing. I was laughing at, but anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, I I have some theories about Chicon. Um, that I will go into once we get get through all of these uh, little bits. Yeah, we got. Um, I mean, we got a lot from him, but we didn't. I, I he didn't end up being as important as I thought that he would be. How many gods no, are I there? I think that he will be. I think that he will be. Oh, okay. Um, 
so yeah, they, they they then get this idea from the blood letter, who, and then the Jacon says like, no, don't do it. You will die. You will yeah. absolutely die. Don't do it. And it's these trials, um, which they then go to this taffy shop. Then go, <laughs> yep, you're right. We will die, and then go home. <laughs> I know. I, I love that, and I love the the I love the woman like at the counter. She was what was her name? Yep. I can't even remember. She was just like. All the guys were like staring at her because I just imagined her just like like yeah. super sexy sitting there, just like hey, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you did this. Like I, I just loved it. They went there, realized that it was going to be impossible. They were all going to die, and just went. Oh, should we go home then? Yeah, let's go back to the lighthouse. Um, then Macy is for the first time actually putting up a bit of a fight against what Grace wants to decide, and she's like, no, I think we need to go to the vampire court. I want to save my family. Um. And she's always given the impression that Grace is being selfish, trying to save her core over her family. The moment that that discussion happens, I was like, Macy's leaving tonight. Like, I was I the it. same way. I did too. I'm like, they're going to go back. Because anytime someone concedes to what they actually want to do, they they end up just doing what they wanted to do by lying. Like that's, I mean, it's the yeah, same way. And with- she had the means to as well. She she can create portals. Yeah. Um. And then I was like, oh God, if they do that, Grace and whoever is left won't be able to get to her because they don't have portals. Yeah, they're they're completely screwed. Or they have Eden. Yeah, that's it. They can fly. Yeah. yeah um, the, the moment that they got back to the the lighthouse and the way that Macy was acting, I was like, she's leaving tonight. No matter what you're doing, she's leaving tonight. And of course, the steamy, steamy, raunchy spice happens. Oh, and yeah. And this whole time, I'm like, stop screwing. Your best friend is leaving. Stop. Stop it! You you had stop having sex. You stop had it. the feeling. <laughs> yeah, and then Jackson walks in, and I'm like, "Oh God, this is, this is getting worse." I laughed so hard. I laughed yeah. so hard when he walked in, and then he like turned around. <laughs> he was like, "Uh," <laughs> and that that whole scene, like, it wasn't awkward as in it's an ex walking in. It was awkward as a brother walking in. Yeah, and I really, I I feel like this scene was needed to show that Jackson was over it yeah because if he wasn't he would have been way more upset oh he he would have been furious or uh, upset like but it was it was more like a oh god please stop please stop having sex we need to go your best friends have left and even then i think that grace and hudson would definitely they must have had some mind-blowing sex for them to not have the same reaction as everybody else in the room when jackson told them that they had left he was they still were just making google eyes at each other and was like let's go for round two yeah like who left what what are you talking about like get get your shit together we need to go yeah Uh, and i mean to be fair i would do the same for a guy that bought me a lighthouse (laughs) that you destroyed and brought me breakfast (laughs) yeah oh and and this entire time as well hudson's feeding on grace like he can't stop he just is like insatiably eating what? her. Yeah, but and then he's he can't go outside. <laughs> yeah, but Jackson can't go outside either, and we never get no. to, and we never get to know. And I mean, I know that it's 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 got to be Flint. It's got to be Flint. He's got to be because they were. Oh, yeah. But they were angry at each other. Are they like? Like they were. But where would Jackson get his food from otherwise? Yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah. Um, and I also have another theory about Jackson as well. It's so excited. <laughs> All right. Um, Hudson's lair. Going back. Hudson's lair. Yeah. So they they work out that Macy's gone, and then they go, okay, we need to get back into the vampire court, and the way in is through Hudson's old haunt, which is his lair, and this is where Grace discovers that this black wall. It, and also, I was I was expecting it to be like a cave, like a creepy cave, but it's like it's like a like a man cave apartment. Like, yeah, it's like a lot. It's like full a of books. Yeah, like a studio style, like a very large. Yeah. I loved it first though when they went to the dilapidated house. I was like, oh, he's gonna, pull, <laughs> it's gonna be beautiful <laughs> once they open the door. And they, he's oh, a hobo. <laughs> yeah, they open the door and then it's still dingy. And you know, I've, 
you know yeah. you know where I where I grew up. I grew up in the ghetto. So like walking yeah. into a house where like you're falling oh, through home. the front porch and there's like you walk open and you open the door and like twenty cockroaches all scatter the second you turn the light on. Like a, ma- a stray cat goes. Meow. Yeah, there's like <laughs> mysterious brown stains on the wall that you hope aren't poop. Like that's I've I've been there. I've lived there. I've I've spent the night there. Like I know that house. And then when he like opens it up, I I knew it. I was like, okay, yeah, there's some really like fancy bachelor pad going on and there was of course but you know what the (laughs) whole time i was thinking during that whole scene where they first go in the house and he's doing the keypad i'm like did they lock the front door did they close the actual front door why didn't they close and lock the front door he did all (laughs) these locks on the front door and now they're gonna leave the door open and go into the lair and you know what they never go and close the damn front door it's still open yep and uh we also find out that because we we worked out that one day is six days frozen in time, mm-hmm. so because that's what she what she works out in the Gargoyle Army, which means that the four months that she was with Hudson, turns out it was a, a year and three months. Oh my heart! And he, she forgot everything. Oh my heart! Because he, he says that yes, yes, Grace, because she recognizes the black wall, um, and he says, yeah, this this is where we lived. This is uh this was our home. Ooh. And you know oh, what? can you charm? We're gonna get them playing VR, yeah. and what they had workout equipment, and there were so many fun things that they're gonna do together while locked there in charm. That's another a- That's ASMR. So we're gonna do Hudson's yeah. Lair ASMR for sure. Yeah. Um. So once we go through Hudson's Lair, we then find the the guards that are actually on Hudson's side this whole time. Um. Uh. But they get swiftly murdered by Isadora. Yes, I was, um, I was very surprised that she was a sister. I was. Yep, same. That was. I, I th- And I thought that she was younger. I thought that she was younger where like Jackson and Hudson had like grown up or whatever, but he kept Isadora secret. But no, I th- thought she was younger. Like she was a complete secret from Cyrus. Um, yeah. Um, and I also thought that either Delilah didn't know about her or Cyrus didn't know about her. I thought Delilah didn't know about her. I thought that she yeah. was like, you know, like... The fact that she was redheaded, um, kind of... No one no one that we know of has red hair. So I was like, hmm, it's not Delilah's kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what a bitch. Oh God, yeah. What what a bitch though. <laughs> she drove me um, bonkers I, the whole time. Yeah. And Grace is like, we should try to get her to be our friend. And I'm like, no, no, I don't yeah. like her. Um, and did you find that like, because we're we're not we're, we're not technically going in order, but because Grace is finding out that she is the goddess of chaos, and we also find out that Isadora is the goddess of order. Do you not think that they're a little bit backwards? <laughs> oh yeah. That was my first thought. Absolutely. <laughs> there was no order I, I was with her. Like, no, she's main like mania, yeah. mental, crazy. So yeah, that that was fun. Um we then discover the dungeons because they get put in there because they get captured by crazy Isadora and we find Aunt Rowena. We also find um, out that Hudson got locked in those crypts for years yeah. and years and years. Yeah, called the descent. Yeah. Which um was sad. Yeah. He got um, one one day of a month that he got to experience the world, so he only yeah. glimpsed it in little evolutionary flashes of society evolving around him, whereas he Which was... Which is miserable. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm, see- I'm seeing so many notes, and I'm like, well, there's no way that we're going to get the- to the end. <sighs> just keep we swimming. Might have to- we might just-, might just have to pick, like, the, the highlights. Um... So we get the moment with Cyrus. I call here as the Mwahaha moment, um, <laughs> where he where he reveals this whole time it's been Liam out of the order that has been feeding him information. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I? No, I don't believe it. I didn't I, care enough. I did. Well, you know what? I didn't either. Mm. I, w- I was pretty convinced that it was that it was Mackay because we had said that that was Mackay because Cyrus is paying and someone for his schooling and someone had put it in my head that it was Mackay but Liam tries to yell at the very last minute like no it wasn't me yeah and that doesn't sound like something that you would do right no. with your dying breath that sounds like nope 
I don't think it was him. And he gave he gave absolutely no vibes of being suspicious either. Mm-hmm. Um, and even when Grace is trying to work it out, she's like, oh yeah, we, we did come out of the Bloodletter Cave and everybody told Liam about it. And then then the information was passed on and I was like, meh. No, I don't think it was him. Yeah, I, I really d- don't. I, I, he, I didn't care enough that I was upset because I was like, oh, this isn't really a betrayal. It's a betrayal on Jackson, absolutely. Jackson, like if he was a real person, Jackson would be super upset because he's known Liam his whole life. I've known Liam maybe less than two pages. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I was like, eh, not much of a loss. So we've, we've we've lost Luca and Luca hurt more than Liam. But it was because Flint was so attached to him. Yeah. That's what was... It's more like Jackson's reaction to people dying is what makes things so sad. Like, I think yeah. that's... Um, so um, after that, they then get sent back to the Gargoyle Court in order to get the Godstone and they have to take Isadora with her. Um, I was... And Grace... I was like, oh. Grace man, Yeah, Grace manages to do some, like, manipulation of a deal and like she knows she knew her hand was forced and she's like okay how can i make like turn this to my advantage um and uh, this is when she starts getting her her tattoos all of a sudden <laughs> she went from having no tattoos to having a vine some flowers a a dagger uh what was what was delilah's a lock and a key a lock and a key and then there was another one as well like she she went from what <laughs> the moon she yes she went from from none to like seven yeah <laughs> she's got a full sleeve she's going get, on she's she's getting addicted uh, we all know that feeling oh yeah um and uh she ends up back in the army um and she spends six days with the training the army and uh there's a really cool scene and i really really enjoyed the scene um and it's because no one respects her she know she then says, "Well, how about as your queen, I allow you some of my friends to train you their tactics, um, in in battle, so that you so you know how to fight them." De Wood's fight scene, oh, I loved it. I love that. That was one of my favorite parts Same. of the book, especially especially all the all the sneaking and putting things in yeah because i thought he was really suspicious and then i was like oh my god it's this reason it's not because why didn't they're trying to sabotage why didn't that slingshot come out in the final battle why that was the last (laughs) time we saw it oh i was so upset by that that was such a great like jumping up in the air and spinning around and like pulling the slingshot back and like i just that whole part i loved it that was and then and then they're like oh no you've got a silver ring and then he punches get punched by him he falls to the floor and he goes silver don't do shit bruv oh it was was amazing yes that was that was was so great you know what it reminded me of it's like when you watch like old cartoons and you've got like the like dorky little science class nerd that everybody (laughs) underestimates but then they end up saving the day that was the equivalent of this uh this it was great it was great. Um, so then um, we get <laughs> Hudson's gifts and the descent story um, because he then fights Isadora. Um, and uh, we find out that the longer they get left in the descent, the more gifts they're supposedly going to have. Um, so that's why we d- we find out that Jack Sinoni has one and Hudson has two. And it's because he was left in the crypt. It's like a su- longer. superpower incubator. Deadpool. That's that's the other thing that it yeah. reminded me of. It reminded me of Deadpool where they're putting uh, them in their little chambers trying to give them their little superpowers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and then we get the creepy skeletons, which I thought was the beginning because I'm, I'm going to be honest. Um, I thought that Cherish the blurb because that was the last thing that I read. Of the Shadow Realm. Yeah. Thing. I thought, I was like, oh, this is where the Shadow Realm comes in. <laughs> nope. But it turns out, I was like, I'm in the wrong book. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we get the we get the creepy skeletons and Hudson makes them go poof. And then we get the revelation that actually he believes that for everything that he turns to dust, they take a little bit of his soul with him. Uh, with them which was kind of a bit depressing yeah that's, um, that was the bonus chapter too was from his perspective knowing yeah. that he has to go poof all the the skeletons um 
and he does uh, he he does ask and i and i couldn't remember whether it was this scene or whether it was like at the lighthouse after the wolf poof scene but he does ask grace to one day use the crown on him um because he doesn't want the responsibility to have to decide whether somebody lives or somebody dies um because he says it's too much of a burden but i i don't think that that was the reason i think he just didn't want to feel them dying anymore yeah i'm wondering if and now that he's kind of realized that there's you know i i I wonder if he's kind of accepted his power now um Mm. and in the next book maybe he's he's accepting of it that he has it and that he needs it rather than trying to get because i you know it yeah there's also that's also not the the limit of his power to find out that he can not only poof things he can poof himself yeah yeah, Which can... then we realize that that's what he did when Jackson killed him. Was he just went poof? Yeah, he he. Which was that was wild. It's like it's like temporary suicide. He like can poof himself, but then he always comes yeah. back, right? Like he always yeah. the dust always reforms and he comes back. So Leah, yeah. everything with Leah was pointless because eventually he could have come back. He wasn't dead. Yeah, he was still... He could have come back on his own, right? It might have taken time. Maybe... Oh my god, we have like 10 minutes left. (laughs) All right, we can can go a little longer. Okay. Um, So we we have all of this like battle scene and then the the gargoyles just point blankly refuse to acknowledge her as queen. She manages to get the godstone from Chastain, but it is a very disgruntled Chastain and it's because... Um, she reveals the reason why she needs it and it's because the kids are getting tortured and he's like if you did just told me that i would have just given it to you oof um and i was like oh you bastard just I like know. you've given her no you've given her no reason to trust you with any information you've given her no reason to say look i am your i am your captain i am your commander it's always been a underhanded compliment and kind of thing he always makes so, yeah. you, he makes you feel stupid even as the reader you're sitting there you're like oh yeah of course we could have just told you what was going on and then you, yeah then, yeah and he's denying her challenging him all the time and everything like that so eventually she gets jacon even more mad with her because she freezes the entire army oh and he shows um, up in a straight up pimp suit doesn't he yeah he is pissed oh uh, yeah Yep. Um, and this is when Remy and Calder turn up. Yes! I, I smiled like, the Yay! whole time. I was so happy. Um, I smiled the whole damn time. Did you did you get the little like nuances about Remy and Isadora? Yeah, I did, but I couldn't yeah. tell if it was like if it I, I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell if it was romance or if it was just like he enjoyed like egging her on. No, me neither. Uh but I have theories, so Okay. <laughs> Um, so, uh, they then go back to the vampire court and then this is when the whole thing sets in motion where they realize that Isadora is the crone's daughter. Um, and Grace makes another deal with Delilah, uh, to escape the prison, knowing that Cyrus is now his most powerful. So he not only has been taken all of these powers, but also he now has the godstone. Uh, they managed to get all of these children out and they go to the witch court. I was really upset when, because I was really hoping that we'd get like Delilah, like just showing some bit of like humanity towards her sons. Nope. And she's when, a bitch. Yeah. She was just, she's like, what would make, what would make <laughs> you think that I would give, you know, a shit about, about yep. them? And I'm just like, oh, you bitch. How bitch. dare you? Like, I, I was really hoping that she would show just a little bit of humanity, but no. No, she <laughs> she deserved what coming to her. Um, so the, I, I loved the bit where um, she asks Delilah for one more favor, realizing <laughs> that she needed Rowena to get out by going via the crone to deliver Isadora to her. And she's like, "Could you? Could I? Could I have one more favor?" She's like, "What?" She's like, "I, I need Isadora down here." She's like, "Oh, I will do that." For free she's like oh <laughs> oh like, same <laughs> don't mind if i do oh uh, i hate isadora too <laughs> and we hate her even more after the scene that follows because she straight up tortures grace in her head oh um, yeah that was the most brutal like graphic thing awful. i think in the whole series yeah uh, she likens it to the ethereum of like what what um 
Hudson and Flint went through and Calder went through as the, the like, psychological torture of the same scene playing out over and over and over again. And but there's it, no way of escaping. But it just got worse uh, and worse and worse yeah. for her. But, but do you know what? We got the goddamn tea right. I yeah. know. People have messaged us. They've been like, you were right. <laughs> I knew it. If it if we, I think that's the only <laughs> real thing that we got right of all of our, the other than yeah. the demigod theory. I think that that's the only thing. The tea was the thing. The health tea that was preventing yep. Grace from gargoyling. So, yep, we were right. I was very happy. I said, I bloody knew it. I got really excited. We were smarty, smarty, I got really smarty. excited. <laughs> um, but eventually she realizes she gets out of the torture. She delivers a Sedora to the crone and the crone is... What about the girl fight? Very much... The girl, girl fight. The big. Oh big, yeah, there's a girl fight. There's a and big. The boys are just staring at. Her. Yeah, they're and, and Grace is like, really? And then they are all just like, uh, uh, and they're like covering you their junk. You don't, you don't get involved. No, <laughs> girl, girls are brutal. Yeah, I, I, I love that Agree. scene because it was very, very real. And when even yeah. Hudson isn't stepping in, I'm just like, yeah, they're afraid that their junk's gonna get smashed because uh, <laughs> because Remy's did. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, and then if the Isadora has that like moment with the crone, and she's not the long lost daughter that the crone was hoping for. I know, and we never get back to that scene. They just leave no. the crone on the porch crying, like, no. yeah, it's awful. But then again, like, we've been told all along that crone is not to be trusted. The crone makes deals that you, you're you gonna have to end, and, and Grace never gets that favor called back again. I know. Um, People have theorized that because Grace helped Rowena get um, Isadora back, that the crone might like just remove that. But I don't think she's that compassionate. I think no. she's a rubbish person who is going to use that favor for all she's worth. Yeah. Um, yep. Um, and then after after this, we'd get the trials followed with one of my absolute <laughs> favoritest literary scenes in the whole goddamn world. Same. I, I laugh. could not stop laughing. I laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed. And th- th- there are only two words that are needed to describe this scene. What are they, Starla? Chicken Flint. <laughs> I, it wasn't even Flint. Oh. It was, it was, it was Mackay. It like, was everything. Gra- grab- everything. And Remy dancing, which that and Hudson talking backwards, that like that's what got me. Yeah. Like I it was, was amazing. I was bummed that nothing bad happened to Grace because I wanted to know what happened with the pink one. I was like, oh, it didn't work. <laughs> I have on. theories about that as well. <laughs> I was actually bummed. That was great though. And in the bonus chapter, yeah. in the bonus chapter for Vampire Court, you get what happened on the other side of the wall, which is everybody was like, it was it was taffy. It was Taffy, and they're like, oh, boo-hoo, you had to fight Taffy. and but They're vampires. They're vampires as well. So I was like, oh, even if they're eating it, it's not going to be fun for them. Eden was Eden was trying to eat it, but, like, it was it had Byron and Raphael and Jackson completely, like, tied and colorful, sticky <laughs> Taffy. Like, it was like vines. It was like living, Ew. goopy Taffy. And, yeah. So that's that was what the bonus chapter was, is what they endured <laughs> with that. But either way, the the potions that was probably my favorite part of the whole book. It was very yeah, cre- me very too. creative. And I and I think that once I wrote Chicken Flint in my notes, I then just got very staccato with my notes. I noticed you went from big long things. <laughs> I went from big long things to like uh the final battle, Jackson, motherfucking dragon, cold as death, Remy's power, Grace surrenders, realize yeah. she's a demigod. <laughs> Yeah, goes kapow on this whole joint. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it 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 went from like a really lengthy scene to all of a sudden this battle, and I ever understand that battles are very fast paced. But I was like, oh my god, I don't know where to look. Oh my god, I don't know what to do. Oh, where? I was so okay. So backtracking a little bit with the final battle with the with the beast creature that ended up being mm-hmm. the little the little boy. Um, I was ups. I was not upset by. I mean, I was kind of upset by Byron dying just because I know his backstory from the Catmere Academy guide and he had his mate killed. And it was like, like, I have a closer connection to him than Raphael, who, you know, but what I really upset me was Jackson's reaction, especially seeing um, Mackay, who is definitely like his secondhand man getting 
moitered and then ragdolled yeah i was that was that one upset me because then i'm like oh this whole time i thought he was the bad guy and he dies like yeah i'm such a bad person but then he moves he ends up not being dead but he is yep bitten by a bug and that's obviously our next our next yeah book. Um, yeah um but yeah, the, the battle I, I I was quite happy with. I think the the way that Grace surrendered because all of the little like Instagram quotes were coming back to me. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this is this bit, or this is this bit, um, and I really liked uh, Cyrus's punishment, which was quite good, um, because I I knew that she was going to use the crown on him. I did not realize that she was gonna like lock him in the blood lettuce cave. Yeah. <laughs> That was great. With Delilah as well, of all people. Um, But one of the things that I was kind of interested by was the fact that Grace got her wing ripped off by the monster of Elios or Erios or whatever it was. um, And then grew it back using her demigod powers in the final battle. And I was like, ooh, she's got a magic green wing. Yeah, she's got two different wings now. Yeah, do you think that the green wing is going to be different that this is going to be something that this wing can do that's different i don't know i'm picturing it almost like she's got like one her gargoyle i mean gargoyle wings are arguably dragon like bat like but then she's got like this green wing which i i pictured to be even more dragon like so i i don't know i'm thinking that it goes on that mother nature side of things like yeah but yeah how, how much did you react when jackson turned into a dragon um i kind of I wasn't surprised. Did you know? Did I w- you know? Yeah, it was foreshadowed the entire book. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't. But I obviously, I, st- I obviously still was like, yeah. Oh yeah, I was happy <laughs> when he did it. I just I was wasn't... like, finally, him and Flint have a reason to be together. Yeah, I'm, I'm so hoping that they're because I mean, we, we get these little glances between them, but then they fight with each other, and like they just, they just need to, they just need to be happy and yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So the only thing that upset me this whole book was Calder dying. Like yep. in terms it of was like brutal. I was so upset because she was such a good character and Remy's it's always the reaction Remy going oh, yeah. through like we were supposed to do this. We were supposed to see the dolphins and I was just like not the, not the dolphin. She did And then when he just the let rip as well. Yeah. Um, and because he, he, uh, so Grace surrenders and she looks over at Remy and he just nods like a, I have nothing to fight for anymore. <laughs> yeah. That was, uh, yeah. Heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, she was, she was the, the one thing that I was like, oh, oh God. Yeah. This is serious style. Um, I wasn't too upset by the other order members dying. And I think that's just because they, they weren't that much of a character but I was more upset for Jackson because they are his entire friendship circle is gone. But Calder, we got like really close to, she, she was, she was just such a, she always made you laugh. And if a character constantly makes you laugh, you're going to be upset when they're. Yep. And do you know what's really, 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 really depressing? Why? She was out of the Ethereum for like, three days i know and she had and what her what she has a sister she has a little sister yeah she was only free for like three days which is so sad yeah but yeah um um we we need to like wrap things up because i i I really need to get to my theories my theories are like the linchpin of everything and i'm so excited to hear (laughs) your reaction to them all right well we'll go ahead and cover the last thing which was hudson's promise and um you know I was like, remember when like last week's episode, I was like, man, I hope he doesn't promise I'll love you forever, which which is pretty much exactly what he promised. Yep. (laughs) Um, It was cute. In a nicer way. It was cute. It was. It was, it was was poems or a lot like love, like song lyrics or or whatever, but I, I feel like it almost kind of got overshadowed by what happened next anyway. Yeah. Um, so I had already forgotten about what the promise was because whatever happened next was the, the better thing. Um, so I feel like his promise wasn't that much of a deal breaker. Yeah, because, because also, what happens if you can? I know I know that relationships are great, but 
that means that if he goes back on his promise, uh, it's it's not a black or white situation. It's not it's not like um, I have promised that I uh, I will get your daughter back to you. Like that could that could that could be even if her daughter's dead. Um, but he's lo- he's promised to love her. Like love happens in different ways. It fades. It 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 grows. And he's promised something that he can't guarantee. Because it's subjective. No, don't don't do that to us, Amber. <laughs> God. But, God, like that's a really bad promise to make. <laughs> God, Amber, messing it all but, up. But, well, I, we is followed by the joyful, joyful of Grace suddenly remembering their time together, which I was very excited by. Yeah, that that made me happy because I know that that's going to be, I mean, we're going to get obviously charm, but then the next book is going to be like, mm-hmm. they're going to be even closer. Um, yeah. And then um, we got Heather, Heather Wear Crab. She's just totally chill. Yeah, with every- she's fine. Yeah, she's she's chill with everything. She's like, yeah, y'all are here, Gargoyle and Eden's a dragon and Eden's cute, which we already knew that. Yep. We already knew that Heather, I think Heather. I think and Heather, Eden. Yeah. I think Heather, Heather was by because I think she was asking if there, in the first book, wasn't she asking if there were any cute girls or guys at the school? Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. And then her and Eden are flirting. Which I thought when I first read it, I thought that was on Grace's behalf. <laughs> oh, like she, she's asking Grace if they're. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Because that... like when, like when you're talking to Taylor, your daughter, you're like, is there any guys or girls you like? Is because yeah. you're like, well, I don't know what you like. You may, you might decide later. I always, I always try to probe her with those questions too. I'm like, any, any, is there anybody at school you like? They don't have to be guys. Like, I try to like be, you know, I try to be Inclusive. open with her. Yeah, she's, she's clearly um, adamantly, adamantly straight. She's, she's like, yeah, she's got like a whole little, whole little group of little creepy little boys that she's like, oh, he's so cute. And I'm like, oh, it's. <laughs> you're so weird little kids are so strange um right. okay let's are you ready let's do it hit me with it okay okay oh my so, god it's so much amber i know okay okay ready yeah so hudson said that he knew that he thought he knew what like that bug water demony thing he was in mm-hmm. the trials do you think that he actually did or made like made a guess um because i i thought that it was like a siren but then I was like, that doesn't really make sense because the sirens go to school. And, <laughs> oh, um, I didn't even. So catch yeah, that. I was like, oh, maybe it's like a siren, like a creepy bug demony siren that calls you to it. It was really creepy. Um, but I was thinking, okay, so the bug bit Mackay. Yeah, they tease the fact that the the cure for the the poison or whatever is in the shadow realm where they're going to save Makai. Mm-hmm. So are they going to see more of these things? <laughs> um, that's a bit terrifying because they did not win by no. any stretch of them. Like they did not win that battle at all. Um, they had no, no way of saving themselves from that. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah. So I was like, okay. Uh, Hudson did say that he knew what it was, but he hasn't said what it is. Okay, so that could lead into the next book. He might just, it might just go yeah. as far as saying like, oh, these are creepy shadow, sh- creepy shadow mm-hmm. creatures from the shadow realm. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then my next question was, do you think that Jackson will recruit a new order? Because he, he's only got Mackay left. Um, and then I was like, dude, I don't remember whether the order even had a function, save for just being his like close circle of friends. Or was it like, like the dragon guard where they were like the trusted advisors of the king? I think that it was just, yeah, I think it was one of those things where he was the prince, therefore he wanted to have a little, like, eyes and ears on the castle so that he knew everything that was going on. Mm-hmm. But he's not okay. hes not at Katmere anymore, so it might not even be yeah. necessary. Plus, he's got his other friends. They don't necessarily need to be vampires. He has everybody else, so he has the equivalent well, of that. Just so I was kind of thinking that maybe the group that's left become the new order. The new order. <laughs> Uh, so the the next thing is, um, do you think that Jackson is warmer in personality because A, he has a soul again, B, he has truly healed over Grace, Chooz, and Hudson, and he's finally happy, C, 
he's a oh my god dragon and has taken on the fiery spirit as well heating up the cold demeanor that he had as a vampire or d he has created a bond with flint whether it's a friendship finally able to blossom now that grace has encouraged the factions to finally mingle or because they are both now the same faction and therefore have something in common because they really didn't or a mating bond that has time to develop or all of the above <laughs> i think it's all of the above i think that that they're, they're able to warm up to each other because jackson is had his soul better. warmed yeah cuz i was like where they're touching it doesn't seem to be in a romantic way it seems to be in a very much like a comfort thing is but it, it like well it also might be the fact that both of them have just lost people flint has just mm-hmm. gotten out of a relationship where he was really close with someone so it might just be you know friendly touches that have intimate intent without them wanting to say that there's intimate intent because then that might be too pushy on someone who's just recovering from their from their partner yeah. being murdered so Mm. I think it's going to evolve is what I think. Okay. I think that this is the this is the seed being planted that's going to bring them together. But I do <laughs> think that um Jackson was feeding on on Flint because who else would he be feeding oh, yeah. on? He couldn't go in the sun. Yeah. He was obviously feeding on somebody. <laughs> okay. So, this is the big one. Yeah. This is the big one. Do you think that we've had a lot of demigods because I think there's one more? Remy has consistently done things that weren't normal warlock capabilities. He was able to use the magic in the prison, despite there being dampeners. He can see into the future, and when Calder was rip- killed, he let rip. He knew what Isadora was, too, just by looking at her. I'm wondering if he's not a warlock at all. He never speaks about his mother being the powerful one, which makes me think that he's maybe Jacon's son, who is the god of time. Oh. It would make sense that he could see he can see through time into <gasps> the future. Oh, that's a good theory. All right, I'm... Um, yeah yeah I'm... and it also would mean that like he's not like uncle to isadora or anything creepy <laughs> yeah i'm 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 team that theory that's a that's a great theory and not one that i had considered mm-hmm. but it makes complete sense yeah. and that would give reason for um tracy to write an entire book about him which we already know that it, it's coming in um i think November. and it would also give a reason for jacon being introduced because he literally only came in for like three scenes Mm -hmm. um and he also talks about like that yarn that he knits with to to kind of fix time Mm -hmm. um and like i was like oh maybe remy can see these strange patterns yeah because grace can so i was thinking oh maybe if like time 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 future you know future site kind of thing um and i was like uh, nobody ever talks about family resemblance in these books either. So like Is- Isadora looks nothing like Jackson or Hudson or Cyrus or Adria. Uh, Grace looks nothing like the blood letter or Alistair or Macy or Finn. So we wouldn't be able to like guess based on looks, but powers and abilities seem to be things, especially eye color as well. Um, these seem to be the things that tied people to others. And when they were in the blood letters cave and grace describes a voice coming out i immediately thought that it was remy so the did way I. That she was describing him and i was like that can't be a coincidence that there is similarities between them um and i was like remy just has way too much power and even when um grace is giving everybody their powers back she speaks about remy's power being like untangible yeah everything so about that that was my big one that was my big one. Okay, <clears throat> that one. That one. I'm all for. I. I, th- I think that you are 110 percent correct, and I think that um, that will be because Remy's school mm-hmm. is going to be the next big thing in the when we get his book. It's about him going to his special school. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because he also he also immediately recognizes Isadora as a blood uh, a demi god as mm-hmm. well. So makes me thinks that he can also recognize them. Um. So yeah. That was, that was my big one. That was my big luck. <gasps> okay. Uh, the other one is a little bit longer. Okay. Just because I have to kind of, you know, rationalize. <laughs> Paint the scene. Uh, right. So Jackson and Hudson's powers aren't because they're from a particularly powerful bloodline. Cyrus talks about Delilah being a mutt and she's ruthless, but she's not from a strong bloodline or even a pure one. Does that mean that their powers only came about because neither parent loved them enough to call for their descent to stop? 
They were so focused on the boys getting gifts that they left them for so way too long and their abilities came out of desperation and abuse. Jackson can move things with his mind and therefore had to try and lift the lid of his coffin. That was how that like power came out. Yeah. Hudson can persuade people to do things and he can not only disintegrate things and people, but he can poof himself just to be able to escape the prison. He would disintegrate himself and reinstate him somewhere else. Isadora can reinstate things and objects that Hudson disintegrates. Did she develop the power because she realized Hudson had turned himself to dust and she did everything she could to bring him back because she realized that she was alone? Hmm. Right? So those those are like the like descent powers, right? Okay. The rest Yeah. The rest of the order didn't have any powers. They were pulled up way earlier than the Prince brothers because their parents realized that the potion had stopped working and that this was now bordering on abuse. Mackay has hypnosis. We never meet his parents at any point that I remember. What if they're just as bad as Cyrus and Delilah and his grin and his calmness are just as much of a mask as Flint's? What must have happened during his descent for hypnosis to be the gift that came to him? He suffers in silence always. He was being poisoned for more than two trials and said nothing. Even when Grace discovers this, he does not tell the group until he is forced to outside of the trials. He never wants to leave the group because he is in pain. He's already had his throat ripped out He ne- and he still wanted to come with them to the, the Unkillable Beast's island. Mm-hmm. It never seems to be out of duty or to be stoic and brave. His pain just doesn't seem to mean anything to him. It's like an everyday occurrence. So what must he have gone through within his descent? And the worst thing is, can you remember where Court left him? Uh, He's in the descent again. Okay. I think it's going to be too much for him. And even though they're trying to save him in uh, Cherish, where they're going to go to the, the Realm of Shadows to kind of stop him from poisoning, I don't think the poison is going to be the thing that kills him. I think it's going to be the fact that he has been put back in. Okay. Okay. Do you think that that's going to that's going to wear at him until he dies or do you think he's going to turn into our next super bad guy i think he's going to be the super bad guy because we're going to need one okay (laughs) sounds awful but uh i think i he has the power of hypnosis and he has not used it a single time you're right and he's had plenty of opportunities too Mm -hmm. um and i'm just a bit concerned that like they talk about the descent being one of the most horrific things that they've gone through. And they, they literally went to the point of desperation where their powers came to them. Hypnosis is quite a powerful power to have and then never use. I'm wondering whether he firstly has a second one and also that his parents are just as bad and that he's now a new Isadora. Oh, okay. What I'm wondering is who's so going to take who who has the right to the vampire court now? Who's uh well, Hud- Hudson abdicates, doesn't he? Yes. So he he's he's fully like a gargoyle court. Um I don't remember. It would technically who be was left? it would be Jackson. No, Jackson's yeah. half dragon though. Oh, I don't know then. It would... And he also it needs to be a mated pair. And Isadora, she's she's a it has to be mated and no one's mated yeah and isadora she's Uh, i mean she's like she's like the the stereotypical like bastard child like they she wouldn't have that like yeah blood right there necessarily would she i mean some some and also and and and, like it wouldn't matter because even if they are like the true heir they don't have a mate so therefore or that we know of Uh, i'm thinking that maybe uh, like one of the order's parents who were mated might be just like temporarily in power like Luca's parents or someone okay that would be the best case scenario because at least they weren't like they they were kind of siding with with uh the a team (laughs) (laughs) the the, the g team yeah they were they were happy to to help and hand over maurice and well not hand her over but rip her throat out and hand over the the truth of what was going on and kind of guide them speaking of which man the witches court they were they were assholes oh i know um and i have theories about about witches you've got one oh you've got one more okay let's do one more and it's sorry so 
Aunt Rowena is pretty damn sure that Grace is also a witch. Okay. Uh, yep. she It must be because her father was a warlock. And at one point, whilst channeling energy from Hudson, she was able to light every candle in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's like, so, like, Hudson has, has magic. And she's like, no, no, not able to light a candle magic. So she must have some. Grace downs a vial of potion during the sand trial and nothing happens. Everyone else was affected by hilarious and yet harmful random afflictions, such as doing everything backwards, being super slow, chicken flint, baby Mackay, dancing like a ballerina. Now, either there is one potion that did nothing in order for at least one person to be able to keep some form of order to be able to complete the trial, but these trials didn't exactly seem to do things fair. So was Grace immune to her gargoyle powers? I think so. And if Grace is a witch and is immune to potions, she's going to be amazing at Wingo Wednesdays. These, I was reading all those and I was like, oh, these are Wingo Wednesday ideas. These are all great I Wingo know. Wednesdays. Yeah. So, um, okay. You know, honestly, I think that it's because she's a gargoyle. I think that it's the, yeah. that it's the, it's exactly what we're expected to know. Good theory. Um, but I think that she's, she's a witch. So therefore she can take part. Yeah. Oh, I want to. I wonder if is Catmere going to be put back together? Like, are we going to get the school mm. back? Is it over? Is I don't know because the way that they were speaking. Also, how 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 bloody convenient of the stars to align again at Catmere. We mean, of course. What part? It's never going to be in a random place, is it? Oh yeah, and and the spooky tree, <laughs> which I really love that that because I remember spooky reading tree. the reading the first book and just being like, oh, this was pointless, this stupid Grace getting a bad <laughs> feeling. Oh, it's a spooky tree, and then it comes back, and then I'm like, <laughs> all this time I was making fun of that spooky tree, and here this freaking <laughs> weird turn me into a god altar is over at the why is it a school you know where i don't want to um ascent into godhood at my freaking high school <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i should have left the remy theory to the end because i feel like that had the most like kapow no that's a um, great that that is a great theory remy is the the sun and demigod of the god of time that's i'm all mm-hmm. for it it makes it makes complete sense. Yeah. And I'm excited by what that would mean as and, well. And what it would mean for his mom. Like how did his mom get locked up there? Why like what was their relationship? The crimes against time. Time, time crime. Time crime. <laughs> <laughs> Cause that would involve the crone too, because she's the one who made the prison. It's like mm-hmm. I'm like I don't I, And also when it when it when it's down to the father as well. Jacon might not even be aware. No, of who Remy is. you're right. And Jacon leaves just when Remy turns up, which makes me think that Remy might know. Like he's trying to avoid him. Yep. Was he ever around with? Because he nope. shows up in his pajamas. Oh, at the battle. At the battle as well. Yeah, he pulls he... up a, pop, a chair for popcorn. Yeah, he pull and he's in his ducky little duck rubber ducky pajamas with his little rubber ducky <laughs> slippers. I love that interaction with Grace and Jacon right at the end, where she's like, "No, I will do this. I am a demigod, and if you have to fix things, then you will fix things. Because do you know who you are? You're the god of time, and therefore you will fix my mess." <laughs> he's like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, she went very Daenerys <laughs> Targaryen at the end. Yeah, she went a little bit power hungry, yeah. mad. Um, um, but they do have a, sh- a, lo- a little moment with her and Miss Isadora where they kind of hold hands and she gives Isadora's powers back and she's like, let's wreck this shit. And she's like, yes, let's do it. And that was the last good I thing imagine. we got with her, though. She was like, yeah. Yeah. I'm not- yeah. O- overall, I-, I really, really enjoyed it. I-, I do think they probably should have been separated into two books just for my eyes, my eyes, my poor, poor eyes. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm, really excited now that i know because i i kind of felt bad about charm coming out and grace still not knowing it leaves us in a better place yeah so now now we know that charm is happening and we're going to get the recount of what happened over those last months because grace 
is aware of them now, I feel like they're nicer. Whereas it's not just like Hudson's secret. He's just keep, keep them to himself. Do you th- mm. do you think, and I mean, this is an outlandish theory, um, but do you think that because Tracy said Court would be the last one and then she just like dropped the bomb that, that Cherish would be the last one, do you think that she intended it to end, but then she backtracked and gave Mackay the the bite and no. threw that in towards the end? Or do you think that it was her intention all, uh, like all along? I, I think that she wrote Crave, Crush, Covet, and Court to be essentially the main story arc. Charm is the novella to tell us what happened during those missing months. I hope it's not a novella. But... I hope it's just as long. <laughs> But I feel like Cherish is almost like Silver Flames. Um, It's like the new generation. It's it's the, if you wanted to stop, this would be a good time to stop because everything has come to an end that was within Grace's teenage years. They are now in San Diego. She's now in university. This, This time arc has ended. But now something new has begun. Now Grace is not just the queen of, of gargoyles, but she is actually the court leader. Uh, she has the gargoyle army. She has duties. She has a court to build because her court doesn't exist in the current time. Um, and she has Hudson, like who has now told her the promise. Um, I f- I feel like this is like the next generation, as you said, where if you wanted to continue reading, it's like the spin-off. Yeah. It's like the, uh, I want more, and therefore I can get more. Uh, but I, I think that Cherish will probably be the last like bit, like Silver Flames. Silver but Flames isn't else. the last. No, but I feel like it would be like, okay, this is the last current book. Anything else will be Bonus. not following the same arc. It will be following the Valkyries. Yeah. Or following, okay. like, it... It feels complete to me. Like, if no more books were coming out, I would feel happy. If no more books were coming out after cover, you would feel unfinished. You would feel... Oh, my God, like, yeah. Exactly. But at the end now, it, I would be... If no no more books were happening, I would still be mad at Tracy for not writing. But it feels finished. Yeah, you're content. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Like, she, like uh, the big bad evil was defeated... Everyone is kind of happy. There were some sad bits. <laughs> I didn't cry. Um, I cried and I, I got teary eyed in Covet multiple times. I did not cry in court and I thought that I would. I cried in Covet um, yeah. dur- when um, I thought Jackson was going to die. Not that I liked him necessarily because I, I mean, it, I had kind of gotten over Jackson by that point, but it was really just like his sacrifice for Flint when she was like draining Jackson, like that, that act of sacrifice. Uh, yeah. it, it was very sad to me. I ugly cried during Grace's torture scene. Yeah, that too. Watching someone else yeah. be tortured is my ultimate torture as well. And that, that was like, I was having really bad. Like I had to close the book a couple times, not during the reread though. Yeah. I was okay during the reread. I, but- I, I almost thought dur- during cover, during that scene, that that was her, in the chamber that it, uh, she wasn't aware she thought mm-hmm. that she had escaped but actually that was her own brand of torture and that remy hadn't rescued her yeah that it was just a way of the, the chamber making sense of her watching her friends be tortured um but then i also ugly cried um during isadora's torture of grace um and i think that that was just because it was the the child feeling like it was her fault and looking at her parents, remembering her being angry and feeling like she she regretted those last moments with her parents and th- there was nothing that she could do to change them and things like that. And parent issues are my downfall. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it was, so that's why I ugly cried. It was, I was like, what if my last moments with my parents could have been different? And then I was like, no. Wait, you don't want that. You don't want it to be different. You want to be gone. You don't want that. Yeah, I I think that that was a good moment for her, though, because it gave her that peace because she was able to, you know, she was able to actually realize like, she was able to heal. Yeah, there really wasn't anything that I could have done. I was acting like a teenager, like like any teenager would have. 
and it's not my fault and it's not their fault and she was able to to settle it so i think that overall it was a good thing it yeah. was just yeah it was very it was very disturbing to read though i did not i did not cry i was kind of like on the edge of my seat like ooh this is getting mm. this is getting intense i laughed i laughed more than i cried i i laughed at the chicken scene so goddamn much <laughs> and I, I it, uh, genuinely probably probably one of the best scenes I have ever read where I felt like everything was so chaotic and stupid and funny. And if it was turned into a movie, I don't think it would translate. I think it would if they handled it really, <laughs> really well. I think that it would because I can picture it so vividly. And Macy, yeah. I, I completely forget about Macy. Like, oh, my God, it's going to get you. And she's just throwing spells and making things so much worse. <laughs> Makai's, Everybody's making everything funny. Makai's like, eating I mean, her hair. All of the thi- None of them were serious enough to cause a threat. It was just more that like Grace was sat there almost like a like a babysitter of all these toddlers in like a onesie eating candles. The others climbing a ladder and she's like, oh, my God, will you all just stop yeah, for a minute? Except just stop during that. There's something also trying to kill you, bury you in sand, like while you're dealing yeah. with all of and that. And you're hearing your friends screaming on the other side. And yeah. You have no idea what that's going on. But yeah, um, that was the scene that I was like, I didn't feel the imminent threat as much and i think that it was because it was kind of laced with humor mm-hmm. the one scene where i was like oh shit things are really quite dire now was the shadow statue scene even the brick thing was like meh they're, really they're gonna be fine okay they're gonna be fine in this brick thing no for the brick thing what upset me was it was just her and jackson and it was the very first challenge and i didn't know what to expect and it wasn't them going through the bricks it was the was fa- it jackson yes it was her and jackson oh. remember they were fighting about where to put the bricks. Oh. And what upset... I thought it was DeWood. <laughs> no, it was her and Jackson. That was the, like, oh. first time that they were alone and they had to, like, work together. And Jackson was trying to protect her. And she's like, no, don't, like, stop it. We need to work together on this. Stop trying to freaking yeah. protect me. And what made me freak out about that is the wall went up. They got separated from everyone else. And then they were hearing crunching and thumping and screaming from the next room and i didn't know who was dying and i was like oh my god yeah. the wall's gonna go down and everybody that i love in this book is gonna be like splattered and all this and then we're just left with grace and jackson <laughs> and they're just left with grace and jackson because and they're trying to no. freaking crying trying to compromise to do this puzzle and jackson is being a being an asshole yeah <laughs> No, I, I was worried about the scene because that was the first time and probably last time that Hudson physically actually hurt Grace. Yeah. And it was through sheer panic of going, you don't touch this thing. Yeah. We do not go near it. And he he wins her and um, he thinks it's a panic attack again. And he's like, just breathe with me, Grace. And she's like, I, I, I can't. You've actually hurt me to the point where my lungs aren't working anymore. Yeah. And uh, I was like, that if you ever had a panic attack you can't communicate anyway for them to have noticed anything different yeah and i was like oh what if one day i'm actually injured and i start having a panic attack and i can't tell people that i'm not just overreacting i genuinely am hurt and i don't know how to communicate that that would terrify me because it makes you worse it then makes you panic even more yeah just like just believe me i'm hurt i'm hurting like but i can't breathe uh, and the feeling of breathe, not being able to breathe is quite terrifying on its own. Like, not being able to catch your breath. And there was also that imminency of, like, the bugs <laughs> as well, which which then starts the whole just... I, I thought that each thing was going to be their worst nightmare. And I was like, wait, is Grace's bugs? Did we miss this? Is she afraid of bugs? And then, it, and then all the bugs came out. And I was like, oh, nope, I'm out. <laughs> Yeah, I think I could deal with bugs, but the second that they start, like, getting it... Warming. Yeah, getting in my hair and biting, that's... Nope. Yeah. That's... Nope. Nope. That's a nope from me. <laughs> well, we are at one hour and 30 minutes. So we went 30 minutes over what we planned, but I think that we're at a good point to to stop. Um, yep. Unless you had any last minute... No, that, that was it. That was it. That was all, all of my things. I have now brain dumped... And got out my theories that I've been holding onto for over a week. Uh, and I am ready to go back to Crush. 
I don't know whether I am ready to go back to crush. I know. I, I'm feeling the same yeah. way. Let's do bigger. Let's do bigger chunks. I was thinking bigger about chunks. it. Chunks. Yeah. I'm like, if we ever, if we actually get to court for these chapter by chapters, we're going to have to cover like chunks at a time to ever get through it. So I think mm-hmm. that we should start doing bigger chunks. Okay. And so. we can also aim to be at least through C- crush and covet by the time that charm comes out mm-hmm. would be great. Yeah. Because we, so we had to read, so we, we got the book on Tuesday. Yeah. We got the book on Tuesday and we've had to read in order to be able to record today's episode, but we also have things happening. And I was like, Oh God, am I going to be able to record today? I don't know. Then your daughter's birthday is today. There's like things in the way. And it would be really good to know that we didn't have any episodes that we had to record other than the charm one when it happens. Yeah. So if we could, it would be, it would be good. It would be good. And then we get to concentrate. Cause I, I felt like I couldn't, fully immerse myself with court because i also knew how fast i had to read it <laughs> that's and i was the same way so i i won't mind re rereading it once we are to that point i'm not going to reread it for a while um just because it took so long i'm going to give myself a break from this but once we get to the point where we're doing it together i think that it'll be a lot of fun to to do that but um all right, guys, thanks for listening. Hopefully you have already read Court and you didn't just get the entire book spoiled for you. If you did, shame, <laughs> shame, shame, shame on you. We did you. warn you. Yeah, we, we tried to warn you. We we tried our hardest. Um, Next week, we're going to be doing episode 25. We will be returning to our normal scheduled crush content. We'll be starting at chapter 27 through who knows what um of crush next week and 72 <laughs> yeah it's something something ridiculous um we will uh probably maybe do a because i was thinking about doing a giveaway this episode but then i saw how few people have actually finished the book and i feel bad doing a giveaway during this episode so- not just not just how many people who have finished the book how many people have got the book yeah yeah some people don't even have it yet i have two copies I'm about to go buy a third mm. so I can give one to you. Start the black market. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll give my other one away. So get, get that looky looky coat. Just like I like, didn't want to watch, want a book, want a court. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out. And uh, this we'll has see- been Court the Book. This has been Court the Book. <laughs> That's what we're, we're going to call it, Court the Book. All right, guys. We will see you next week. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Chicken Flynn!